Today, I'm going to show you how to create the Orton effect in Adobe Lightroom. As Lightroom has continued to improve with new features and enhanced masking capabilities, I find myself doing more and more of my photo editing in Lightroom and less time spent in Photoshop. However, one effect I like to use on some of my images is the Orton effect, that soft, glowy look in the highlights that some photos have. For certain photos, I still like that, and I usually use Photoshop for that effect on those images. It's easy for me to pop over into Photoshop, use a third-party panel I have, something like TK Panel or Pro Panel by John Weatherby, and it's always just been super easy. Use that panel, create the effect in Photoshop, and then save it back down to Lightroom. But as I spend more and more time in Lightroom, I figured it was worth taking some time to try to replicate this effect in Lightroom and reduce the amount of times I needed to go to Photoshop. But first, let's talk about the Orton effect if you aren't familiar with it. The Orton effect was initially developed by Michael Orton, a Canadian photographer in the 1980s. The effect itself is essentially an ethereal soft glow to your photos in the highlights. Now this effect was developed back in the film days, so Orton would blend two images together. He would take one in focus and the other out of focus and overexposed to create the effect by blending them together. Now it's a simplified explanation of what was done in film, but it sort of is the essence of what was happening. Now this effect works better with some images than others. Typically ones for me that I find it most appealing are where you want just sort of a soft glow in your highlights to give the image a bit of a dreamy look. I tend to do it on certain forest scenes where you've got some light coming through the tree canopy and certain waterfall scenes as well. Today, with all of our digital post-processing software, there's several different ways to do this in Photoshop and other programs, but we're gonna look at how to do it in Adobe Lightroom today. Now, before we get started, as with any photography edit, it's possible to overuse this effect and to make the effect too strong. So be very deliberate about what images you choose to use the effect and use some restraint in applying the effect. It should be a subtle effect, not an overwhelming, over-edited look to the image. So keep that in mind as we go through this. So what I have here is an image I took in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park along a stream after a morning rain about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And I think this is a good example of where I would like to apply the Orton effect. Now I've done some basic edits here. I've sort of fixed the exposure over here. I've adjusted the contrast. I've played with the tone curve over here. And, you know, I've done my detail. So I've really taken this photo to just about where I want it, which is usually how I would do the Orton effect. I would get my image pretty much to where I want it, and then I would work on applying this effect. Now, the reason I chose this image is it's a stream. I've got these highlights up here in the trees. This is what especially draws me to it, is I've got the highlights on the rock, highlights on these trees, and highlights here. And that Orton effect is gonna give it just that little bit of glow, that little bit of dreamy look to it, just a little bit. So like I said, you do wanna be careful of the Orton effect. It's not perfect for every image, and you also wanna be careful not to crank it up. It's real easy to go overboard with the Orton effect, and people are gonna look at it and go, oh, there's another one with the Orton effect. So just be careful of that. But for the sake of this video, I am going to move the sliders a little more than I normally would just so that you can sort of see it on the video. So, and I'll sort of comment on that as we go, just to sort of remind you that I'm probably bumping certain settings up a little more or down a little more than I would normally, just so that it's easier to see the difference between the before and after in this video. But like I said, when you're doing it on your own, just remember subtle changes, don't overuse the effect and don't go overboard with it. So. Here we are with this image. Like I said, we've done our basic edits to it. And there's a couple different ways to do that. And if you go look on YouTube right now, there's several different great tutorials from various people on how to do this effect. And really this technique isn't something super new. There's other people doing it in Lightroom, but I feel like for where Lightroom is at today, this is a pretty good approach to it. It's a little simpler in some ways than it was before. And some of the basics and such are still right there. So let's dive in and let's take a look. So essentially, there's a couple steps to doing this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask, and it's gonna be a luminance mask. So we're gonna come on here underneath masks. We're gonna go ahead and expand this just so we have it. Like I said, I have a little mid-tone contrast mask on here. I have a vignette just applied here, a nice gentle vignette. You can see it right there with the red. Now we're gonna create a new mask. Now I want this effect to apply towards the highlights. So with the new masking tools and the more advancements in Lightroom, I can just come down here and do luminance range. And I'm just gonna bring this up. Right now, this is affecting everything in the image. But I wanna bring it up to really just get those highlights. So I'm just gonna slide this slider up right into around here. And you can see by the red, I've right up in here, there's, it's gonna get most of the effect. And then down here in the darker part of the image, it's gonna hit a little bit of it, a little bit here on these rocks, a little bit here in the water, a little bit how the water spills out. 
but it's not going to do the whole image. It's going to be focused in on the highlights. So first thing we want to do is I've got my mask set and I can always come back and change this as I work along. I can either reduce the number of highlights it's applying to, or I can increase the number of highlights and let it affect more of the image. So that is one of the adjustments we can make. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it that, that glowy look. We're going to give it that brightness. And a lot of that is done through the tone. And typically what I'll do is we're just going to bump up the exposure just a little bit. Nothing too crazy, up around 0.15. I'm going to go to 0.20 on this. I would probably actually be more down around 0 0.10, 0 0.15. Just a little kick in the exposure. I'm going to increase the contrast. We'll swing it. Gets a little too bright there. So we'll kick the contrast up to around 20, 21. We'll leave it at 21 right there. And then because I've brought the exposure up, I'm actually going to bring the highlights down a bit because if I'm a little closer or if there's more sky in here, I wouldn't want to blow those highlights out. So it's just sort of a good practice, in my opinion, just to bring those highlights down just a touch. I'll do 16. So let's hide this. It's a pretty subtle. There is very little. In fact, I'm going to bump the exposure up just a little bit more. This is all the way up to 0.40, which is more than I would normally do. But now you can sort of see getting that more brightness. So here's the mask on. I've kicked the bright, the exposure up, contrast up, highlights down. This is where I sort of start with. And you can see there's a change between there. Mask hidden, mask applied. Just makes everything a little brighter getting applied to that whole highlight region. Now, that's sort of my exposure piece. But then I also want to give it just sort of that dreamy look, that, that sort of soft look. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come down here to the effects. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my clarity down. We're just gonna make it a little fuzzier. You can do big swings. And for this video, I would normally probably be in the negative 15, negative 20. We're gonna kick it all the way like negative 25 for the sake of this video. And that softens the edges, that softens those edges of contrast to help give it that soft, dreamy look. And we're going to increase the texture a little bit because we don't want to completely obliterate some of the structure and the detail will bring that up. So we're going to bring it up to about 15. And finally, we're going to give it just a touch more glow. And the dehaze tool, if you reduce dehaze, like look, if you slide that dehaze way over, you can see everything got way brighter. And the dehaze is a pretty cool little trick to be able to introduce that sort of glow into your images. So we can use dehaze. Again, you got to be careful. You don't want to go too far. If I was doing this as a real edit, it'd probably be around negative 10 or so. For purposes of this video, just so you can see it, I'm going to kick it up to like negative 18 right in there. So now let's turn this mask off. Let's turn it back on. There's none of the Orton effect applied. This is the mask disabled. So all of those exposure changes, that exposure slider, the contrast slider, the highlight slider I played with, that's gone as well as my texture clarity and dehaze changes. So we're going to bring it back, turn the mask back on. And you can see it gets nice and bright. Big difference between those two. And if we look at the image, you can see it all the way down in here. Even this water is getting it. So keep an eye on that water. We're going to turn the mask off, hide the mask, turn it on. Let's look at this rock right here, right in through here. Let's hide that mask, turn the mask on. And as you can see, using this luminance range allows you to sort of apply this Orton effect, that sort of soft, dreamy look to your image and just target the highlights. So that's really what I do with the mask. I make those changes and I've sort of applied this Orton effect to this image. But let's go and take a look. So I said you could change the luminance range. So the luminance range by sliding over to the right like this is we're targeting those highlights. We're saying anything in this red is where it's going to affect. That's what's what's affecting it. So if I want, if I thought that was too much and I was hitting too many, I can move this. And this will change which highlights I'm hitting. And then this is the feather amount. These are the highlights I'm going to hit. And then this is my feather amount to sort of let it fall off. So I can even change the feathering amount. So see, we can turn the mask off. This is without the Orton effects. Turn it on. This is with the Orton effects. So I actually sort of liked it a little bit more like this. And I want to feather it a little more. I think that gives it a, nice, a slightly nicer look. So there we are. This section right here. These are the highlights I'm targeting. I'll show the luminance map here. 
Red is showing what's hitting. So it's hitting this nice big bright area up here. It's hitting the tops of the rocks. The shadows of the rocks are not getting hit as much as you can see. They're in black. They're not getting impacted. The water here sort of just flows out. It's impacting this water, not impacting the water down this corner. And it's even hitting these leaves up here on the ridge as well. So that's what we see there. Let's do one more. Hide. There it is without. With nice subtle effect. So that's one way you can do it. You can play with how many highlights are adjusted by adjusting that luminance range. The left side is the shadows, the darks, the right side is the whites, the brights, and you can influence what it affects. And for Orton effect, you typically want to go for the highlights. So, but there's another thing you can do to play with this as well. And that is we have this slider to change how strong this effect is. It defaults to 100, but that lets me increase the effect by moving it to the right. As you can see, this gets much, much brighter. Over applied, starts to soften it up too much. Not great. So let's set it back to 100, the default. But if I wanted to back it off just a touch, I can do that as well. And here we are. I'm going to show you before and after what I've backed off the intensity a little bit. This is how it is now. This is the before. Not quite as much of the glow. Bring it back and we get a little bit more glow through the image. So you can also use this intensity slider. So for example, what's sort of cool about this is in this video, I moved all of my sliders more than I normally would have, but I'm still able to sort of save the effect and maybe how I'd actually edit it by just reducing the intensity. So I don't have to go back in and necessarily change all of those sliders if I got it pretty good and maybe I just went too strong on them. I'm just back off the intensity a bit, do it before and after, before, after, and make things work. Now, again, I'm exaggerating this for this video. I wouldn't have gone quite as strong with some of those sliders. I went pretty strong on the exposure slider just to sort of demonstrate. So, and that's it. That's the luminosity mask. So before some of the upgrades in Lightroom, you used to have to do like a linear gradient and then use range masking, which would work similar. But now with the more advanced masking capability in Lightroom, we can just jump straight to the luminosity mask, target those highlights by setting your luminance range over towards the right to target those highlights and then make those changes. With those changes essentially being bring exposure up a bit, bring contrast up a bit, bring my highlights down a bit because I don't want to blow those highlights out. So I usually have to bring them back down a little bit. And when we go down, Further below to the effects in the mask, I will usually bring my texture down a bit. That's going to sort of soften the edges up a little bit, give it that sort of soft look. Use the dehaze, bring it down just a little bit because it gives a little, enhances that glow just a little bit more. And then because I don't want to munge all the detail, I sort of bring the texture up. Now, after the mask is all set and I've pretty much had my Wharton effect the way I want, I would go double check the sharpness because I've been playing with some of the softness. I've been playing with the clarity. I would go double check that. So what I would do is I would come down here to the detail panel. It's right here. We've got our default sharpening. Now, normally I wouldn't play a whole, I wouldn't make drastic changes to this, but in this particular case, I'm going to use sharpening and a mask to really refine that just to the edges. So the way I do that is I'm going to move sharpening up somewhat significantly up into like the 80 ish range. Normally I'd probably default to around 45, 50 for the sharpening amount. But then I'm going to use masking and masking is going to help control what this sharpening gets applied to. Right now it's getting applied to the whole image. I just want it to go to the edges. So I'm going to hold the option key down on the Mac and I'm going to slide this slider over and white is what's getting sharpened. And because I really want to bring this way in, we're going to go way across. So as you can see here, this mask, I am sharpening the edges of the boulders. I've got that tree limb coming across. Everything that should be sharp, the edges of rocks, are getting the maximum sharpening here applied. So we're going to put that in there. And essentially, I just sort of clean up that sharpening bit. So I sort of get that mix between the glow of the Orton effect and the sharpness of the image. And that's it. That's how you use a luminance range mask in the settings I changed to replicate the Orton effect in Adobe Lightroom. So as you can see, it's become even easier to replicate that Orton effect in Adobe Lightroom without the need to bounce over into Photoshop. So take some time, give it a try with your images, try to use Adobe Lightroom to get that Orton effect. Remember, it doesn't work for all images. Try to look for something that's got a little bit of a soft glow to it. Forest scenes can work well, scenes with water in it, waterfalls, streams, anything with that soft light where you just want to give it that sort of dreamy at the real feel. Give it a try, see what you think, and let me know how it goes.
So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, and mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.